Scotland is slowly exiting its coronavirus pandemic restrictions, in step with England. As the country leaves behind the most strict elements of lockdown, it also hopes, in the near future, to leave behind the UK. The ruling Scottish National Party, SNP, among others, has long campaigned to become independent from the Union, and the SNP has grown in popularity in recent decades to the extent that it now enjoys a near majority in Holyrood. While Moore Sturgeon has assured that her main priority is tackling Scotland's coronavirus epidemic, she and her colleagues are tacitly working on independence plans in the background. First, the country must gain permission to hold a second referendum from Westminster, no small feat. If independence was won, several thorny issues would follow. One of the lesser but important aspects of independence would be whether the country kept the Queen and the monarchy. A recent poll commissioned by the Sunday Times found that 47% of Scottish adults would vote to keep a royal head of state. But, Moore Sturgeon's position on the matter has been unclear. Her potential stance was explored during the most recent episode of Pod Save the Queen, hosted by Anne Gripper. Here, Bev Lyons, showbiz editor at the Daily Record, suggested Ms. Sturgeon was being tactically quiet about her support for keeping the monarchy in an independent Scotland. She said, Alex Salmond, he was all for an independent Scotland with a monarch. I was trying to look up what Nicola Sturgeon stands for but am not so sure. I'm thinking that Shush is possibly on the same lines of that but Shush has probably not aired it too much because I think it's one to wait and see how everybody feels. Whether or not Sturgeon might say, yes or no, there are people further down the ladder or some people who may have some hidden secret clout that think otherwise, and feel that it's time for a whole, radical reimagining of the country from people who just want total change. And there's also a fear of change too. And I think anything like that would need to be looked at over a period of time. You can't just make all these changes at once if it were to be made. The royal family's links with Scotland are deep rooted. Balmoral Castle, in Aberdeenshire, is one of the family's most famous residences, bought for Queen Victoria by Prince Albert. The Queen also spends a week every year at Holyrood Palace in Edinburgh, the official residence of the British monarch in Scotland, known as Royal Week. Prince Charles is known to be fond of the country too. He went to boarding school there and is often seen sporting a kilt. The royal family has Scottish titles. Prince Charles carries the title Duke of Rothesey, while the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are referred to as the Earl and Countess of Strathern. Mr. Salmond, ahead of the 2014 vote, stressed the importance of these ties and associations. He pointed out that the Union of the Crown predates the Union of the Parliaments, which he and Ms. Sturgeon wish to end.